reminder on that. We'll have this available uh, on our YouTube uh, link uh, tomorrow in the update. So just a couple things um, to start off with. Uh, you should have gotten an email earlier today that the golf course is opening up uh, on November the 11th. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind with that opening. Um, we will be cart path only um, for the immediate future. And there also will be no uh, exceptions given to anybody uh, that that needs that for a, a, a handicap flag. Um, so at this point, that that turf just cannot take any cart traffic at all. Uh, so unfortunately, it'll be cart path only with no exceptions, at least for the immediate future. They're going to run 10 minute intervals uh, on tee times, and they're going to use uh, just a single tee start. Um, the first few days, if not the first week, um, it'll be a lottery system for tee times uh, until play history is built back up, uh, and then we'll be back. Um, then we'll be back uh, under the normal uh, point system under that Chelsea system. So uh, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> but next Friday, uh, same tee time privileges: um, Golf Village seven days, Lake Village two. Um, but you can make those tee times uh, starting for next Friday today if you're in the, if you're in the Golf Village. So. Um, we did put out uh, today an update that the Tiki um, <clears throat> is serving food uh, from a patio grill. However, um, we just had the Board of Health here doing one of their inspections, and they informed us that we're not allowed to be cooking on a grill on the pool deck. So we are trying to sort that out right now. Um, that is certainly new information to us as we do a lot of outside cooking as well as a lot of other clubs. So we're not sure if something has changed. Um, but Leon and Chris are working with them right now. Um, but it is possible that we may not have uh, food service out there. We're still working through that. So apologize for that change. Um, and then also for the associations, um, just a reminder um, that you should have seen some emails go out earlier this week. One was a frequently asked questions regarding remediation and restoration reconstruction. And the other one was a restoration reconstruction uh, resource guide uh, that that is small in scope right now but we plan to continue to add to this as more resources become available uh, it's really just the starting point um, but that both of those uh, went out via email and on Facebook this week and you can pick up copies of those here at the at the front desk also for those wanting a copy of the water mapping, uh, executive report for each community that that is on the website under the real estate section and then be able to click on your um, uh, your appropriate association so all right uh, we're going to jump into questions that's all I have on the update side of things so um, will CJC rehook the toilets and tubs and place them back in the bathrooms um, I don't think that's part of their contract right now, but I, I'm not going to uh, say that that's confirmed. Um, but but I know uh, from a remediation standpoint, that's what they're contracted to do. Um, that that I don't believe that's part of what they're doing. But if that changes, or if, if I find out that I have the incorrect information, I'll let you know. What is expected rescinding the vacate order at Southmont Co? I have a contractor and like to get into the restoration phase. Yeah, so what we reported earlier this week was that it's expected that your associations would be able to lift the vacate order once remediation is complete. And pretty much that means uh, completion of all the steps that we provided in that uh, document uh, and that your associations may have also forwarded to you, um, with the last step being the drywall replacement and the drywall being the seams taped and mudded in. So that would complete remediation at that time, your association could uh, lift that vacate order. I don't know in some of the larger associations if they would do that on a building by building basis. Uh, I would assume that, that that's definitely possible uh, because, you know, obviously like South Mont Cove has 10 buildings, all 10 aren't going to finish drywall at the same time. Um, but I think that's yet to be determined. So, um, but that's what's uh, what basically needs to happen for the vacate to be rescinded. Will CJC be doing any plumbing such as repair damage connections? Absolutely. Again, this was part of 
the questions and answers that we put out and, and definitely trying to refer you all back to that. I mean, we took some time to put that five page document out to answer some of these questions that continue to come up again and again. But anything that's damaged inside the wall in terms of a broken water pipe <clears throat> or those electrical outlets that need to be replaced, all that will be shored up, fixed, complete before the drywall comes back up. Any idea when the drywall will be replaced in South Mount Cove condos? No, we're right now, the, the, the up until now, there wasn't any permitting that was required. However, once we get into the drywall phase, that does require permitting from Lee County. So we the permits are filed. Um, we're just waiting for Lee County um, to approve that permit. Uh, we've actually got people from Clyde Johnson that are going down to the county office every day uh, to see if they can move that along. Um, my understanding is we have <clears throat> we have a semi truck of drywall on site. Um, so as soon as that permit comes in, those units that are at that point in the process will start seeing drywall. But right now, uh, just another one of those moving parts that we don't always have control over, uh, and that's waiting for the permit to be approved. So are owner contractors allowed in units prior to move in? Um, I, I, I'm assuming you mean in, in, prior to the vacate order being rescinded, if that's what you mean. The answer to do any work would be no. I mean, if you want to bring a contractor by to see what they're dealing with, that that certainly is a reasonable request and, and would be granted. Uh, but in terms of actually doing any work in the unit, no, I, I that vacate order needs to be rescinded because that guarantees that they are 100% done with remediation before you have contractors come in and do work. At the time adjusters were in our unit, the assumption was that tubs and showers would be taken out. Will the estimate be based on that? Since that time, depending on visual inspection, some tubs and showers will not be removed. I, I think that's a question that'll be confirmed once we get these insurance reports done. But I mean, if your adjuster wrote in that a tub and shower needs to be replaced, chances are that'll be on that insurance claim. And then and whether or not the shub or tower shower wasn't taken out, <clears throat> I, I'm not so sure that that insurance claim would be adjusted uh, for that, it, it, you know, with, with less, excuse me, with less claim money. But I don't know until we see that report. Um, <clears throat> we were told by FEMA truck driver, they are not picking up glass mirrors, et cetera. Is that being addressed? I have not heard that. Um, that's not any information that, we received um, from Lee County or FEMA when we were coordinating with them to get them our community, but I, I will look into that, but that's the first I've heard that they're not picking up glass or mirrors. I thought the club was going to put our condos back in place without any cost to us. I don't know where you would have heard that from, but that's nothing that I've said. Uh, I think we've been pretty consistent on how this process works with the insurance settlement uh, and, and what's going to be available uh, in regards to that. So um, I'm sorry if, if you've gotten bad information, but I, I, I don't think I've ever said anything close to the fact that we were going to put uh, the, the club was going to put back the condos. So we need a plumber to reconnect our plumbing. Um, I mean, the plumbing that's damaged because of remediation, you do not need a plumber for that. That'll be closed up. Um, but I mean, in terms of putting back um, shower sets or tubs, yeah, that, that would be something a, a plumber would need to be uh, hired to come in and do if, if you're doing this uh, subcontracting on your own. We received a message saying our remediation ends with mudding and the sheetrock. Will the trim be completed by CJC as previously noted? Who will do the cleaning and sanitizing of the grout as previously alluded to CJC? Who is responsible for replacing? So um, that, that is correct. That's when remediation is over. Uh, Clyde Johnson is not doing any sort of trim work. Um, that's never been part of remediation. Um, as far as the cleaning and sanitizing of the grout, that is part of remediation. And that, that process will be handled um, by Clyde Johnson's group. Um, so I think I answered all three of those. When will we get specifics on when and what and how much money we can expect on our units on Bridgestone Court? Again, I, I don't know if, I, I think we've said this quite a few times. 
we have no idea until we get those insurance reports. I have no idea when we're going to get those insurance reports. I think it's as simple as that. I don't know. But when we get them, the plan is absolutely to be able to share those with unit owners so they can see what's in there, vet that they got everything included. But I have no idea when we're going to get those. Um, and no one's told me an approximate timeline um, when we would get that. What is being done for a wall when there is a mirror? And what about the wallpaper that gets cut up to four feet? Again, th those are those are restoration questions. That's going to be up to whatever is done in the restoration phase. I mean, if a mirror had to come off a wall, it has, it has been taken off in order to cut that drywall up to four feet. I know they've tried to save things like that, but uh, it isn't always savable to salvage a, a full length mirror from a wall when taking it off. But when they've been able to save it, um, that they, they've saved it. Lawn service in South Mont Cove. We are hoping to get mowers there next week. Um, they are, they are, they are working their way through. Um, I don't want to misspeak here because Pete just gave me an update yesterday, but they are, they are in the Lakes Village doing cleanup work. And those cleanup crews are out in front of the mowing crews because they want to try to do a, 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 a hand pickup of of any debris that's left over. So uh, my last update from Pete was he felt pretty good about getting mowers in Lake Village um, uh, as early as early next week. After a mediation, can I hire my own contractor for restoration in Sutton Walk? Absolutely, you can. Yes. We have our personal stuff in the garage at Somerset Villas. When will drywall work be done in the garage? Um, again, garages will come after residential units are um, are taken care of. Um, so when that process begins to wrap up, those crews will move to garages. And if you're in Wedgwood, they'll also move to those um, those stairs, uh, those stairways leading up to the second floor uh, units. So uh, that that's next in line. I don't have a timeline on that, uh, but that's next. Has the Sutton Walk pool been cleaned up yet? No, uh, that will actually start on Monday. Uh, we actually needed to bring in some additional equipment to take out the uh, the big debris that's in there. Uh, so that you'll see that happening starting on Monday. Once that debris is cleaned up, then our crew will get in there, uh, clean up uh, that pool, we'll put water in it, and we'll uh, figure out what, if any, equipment damage needs to be repaired. So Sutton Walk is the remaining pool um, to, to, to complete kind of the cleanup process, but that happens next week. We were told that after the remedi remediation was complete, that then tile and carpet would be replaced as part of what the association was doing. Is that now, now, is that now not being covered? Again, I don't know, not sure where you heard that from, but I'm going to restate pretty much what we've been saying all along is that in the restoration phase, we, we have always said we would expect you to have maybe a couple of options. One would be to, to do this on your own. Hire your own contract, do it the way you want. The second option would be is that we were hopeful that we would have vendors on site that would be able to offer a particular package for each association to be able to come in and say, okay, I want the package and it includes this cabinet, this countertop, uh, these these floors, et cetera, et cetera, for this price, for those that don't want to customize. That is still the plan. Um, we are working with vendors as we speak. I'm hopeful that we'll have more information to share on what those vendor options are and how that potential option will take place in the next week or two. Um, but But, I mean, nothing has changed in terms of the restoration process and what's available um, for you to do. Number one, the easiest in terms of speed and getting what you want is to hire your own subcontractor. You can get that done um, at, at whatever speed the subcontractor can work, and you can do things exactly how you want them done. Um, the second option is going to be really at the mercy of these vendors in terms of how quickly they mobilize, how quickly they put the packages together, and how quickly they get everybody signed up. So, uh, that second part, more information to come. Who is paying for additional repairs? Painting cabinets, replace tubs. I thought all this was covered by the master coverage that 
CJC was contracted for. Again, I think you're confusing two different segments here. What, what you allude to, most of that is covered in the master flood policy, but Clyde Johnson was only contracted for remediation of these units. They, they were not contracted for restoration. Clyde Johnson may or may not be a vendor that's available to you in one of these package deals down the road. That could be still the case, but your associations only contracted Clyde Johnson for remediation. Uh, not, nothing has changed in that regard. Um, but what you allude to here, cabinets, tubs, that is covered under the master flood policy and will be in those insurance reports that we get and those proceeds will be part of that insur insurance settlement. What type of permits do the contractors need in order to begin work? We sent a document out two days ago that was a resource for restoration that had many links to information regarding permitting, the options you have as an owner, whether you hire a subcontractor or you do an owner build, there, there's a wealth of links and information there to Lee County, and we strongly suggest that you do that. We are not going to give any sort of legal or professional advice on the permitting process for individual units. That is going to be up to the owner, um, but we are going to provide all of the information that we can to make sure that you have that. But that document is out there and was sent out there earlier this week. Are storage units in Waterford the owner's responsibility to clean? I do believe, and I hope I'm not confusing associations, but I do believe communication was put out to Waterford to have their owners clean out their storage units. Yes, um, I, I, I do believe they ask you all to do that. Need to talk about what is covered by remediation and what is covered by restoration concerning ceramic tile and condos. You once said grout will be removed and regrouted. Is that still the case? Bathtub is badly chipped and should not be put back. Who puts back interior doors? Are they ordered? All right. So grout, absolutely. Grout is part of, cleaning of the grout is part of the remediation. If they can't clean it, um, then, then it would need to be re-grouted. Re but I think there's, uh, at least there's, there's hope from what I'm hearing that most of that grout can be clean and disinfected, but that's part of uh, remediation. Um, bathtub is chipped and that's possible. I can tell you that um, things like bathtubs and countertops and shower sets, even though they're trying to save them, those from my understanding were, were listed in many of the adjusters reports for replacement. So if you've got a bathtub as a chip in it, we'll need to wait until you get the insurance report. But the hope is, is that bathtub is already on there for replacement from the settlement proceeds, as, as well as your countertops. And I'm hearing that from others as well, that, that they broke my granite countertop when they tried to take it off. Yes, that is happening. And that is normal. You can't always save a countertop based on where the seams are. Um, but our understanding is those countertops, even though it's advised to try to save them, would be considered in that adjuster's report. And we'll have to confirm that when we get the report. Um, who puts back interior doors? That, that is a good question. And, and I'm gonna get better clarification on this uh, at a Monday meeting. I do know there's a couple of associations that have already said, and they may even have communicated to you in those associations that they have went ahead and contracted Clyde Johnson to order all of the interior doors for your uh, for your association. I think there's some associations that have not made that decision, but we're going to try to get everybody <clears throat> on the same page and be able, I'll be able to let you know and confirm what associations are doing that versus maybe what aren't, or I'll let you know that they're all doing it. But I, I do know that a couple associations, I, I believe I have heard, and I thought I saw something that was put out in one of the emails from the association that said, um, they are already ordered or ordering all the interior doors. So more to come on that. The upper floor unit owners received a survey to disclose damage to their units. Can you please advise what would be covered under the condo insurance policy? If covered by the condo policy, do we need to fill, find a vendor to repair the damage or would the condo association, association be responsible for the repairs? So you're probably in South Mont Cove because I think that's the survey you're referring to that went out this week. Um, again, on the second floor of these units, that's going to be under the property 
uh, insurance coverage. And again, I, I think uh, th there still needs to be some review or receipt first of, of this insurance report. Um, I do also believe that there's going to be some um, some areas in there that that may or may not be covered based on whether it was original to the building. What I'm understanding is something like storm shutters. Storm shutters were not part of the original building. Um, if they were damaged in the storm, it would probably not be covered under the master property policy. It would have to go on the owner's personal property. I've also heard, again, not confirmed, but I've heard this, that the same holds true for windows. If it's an original window to the building, then it would be covered under the association's property coverage. But if it's not original, then it would be the owner's um, uh, the owner's responsibility. Again, I can't tell you how the adjuster was able to determine or if they did determine whether a, a window was original or not, but that's why we need to wait to see these insurance reports to understand that. I would imagine, um, and again, I'm just assuming here that if you have damage to your upper unit and it's covered under the association policy, I would think the association would empower you to complete that repair and then you would partake in any of the insurance proceeds that would be assigned to that area, obviously less any deductible. I would assume that's the, the program. So um Again, I, I think more will come on that um, as we head down the line. We have said, and we said this weeks ago, if you've got damage that is an emergency, a leaky roof or something like that or ceiling, please email that to Jennifer and we'll make that a priority to shore up. Uh, but we're hoping to get uh, these property insurance reports sometime, hopefully right around the same time we get all these flood insurance reports, we have more data to share. Will CJC be paid separately or is their fee coming off of the reimbursement allocated for each unit, hence reducing the amount we have to restore the unit? Yeah, your property has been adjusted based on both the remediation efforts as well as the restoration efforts. So absolutely, when the insurance settlement proceeds are given by your association, what will need to be deducted is what, what was the cost to remediate that unit? Um, but but that is in that settlement is those costs to pull out the cabinets, uh, sanitize, cut drywall, pull out a tub. All of that is is going to be in that insurance settlement. And we should be able to see that in those amounts very clearly when we get these adjuster reports. We're, we're, our understanding is that they're going to be very detailed and line item these things out, I think, even by a room by room basis. Um, so that is in there. How confident can we be the adjuster did more than a cursory glance at our unit or do we get a written report? I, I mean, I've addressed the written report many times. Yes, I mean, there's going to be a written report um, and, our, and, and we're going to absolutely have to share that and we'll want to share that with unit owners so you can vet that report. I can tell you, I, I met every adjuster and they, they spent up to 30 minutes, if not more, in every single unit documenting and taking pictures. So I'm, I'm very confident. And I will tell you this, these adjusters... One thing I learned was, you know, part of their compensation is on how much business they write. So every adjuster was always looking for ways to make sure they could include as much as possible into that claim. So it wasn't a cursory look at all. Um, it was definitely a thorough look. Yeah, if, re if reinstallation of bathroom fixtures is not part of the CJC contract, it needs to be renegotiated. We cannot return to our units without a working bathroom, cannot manage restoration remotely. Again, I think when we're talking about what CJC is contracted for, I'm going to defer you back to your association um, in terms of, you know, what they want to do as a group. Um, but, you know, the, the return and the restoration of that unit has always been um, part of the process for, uh, for owners to take part in. I believe we were told all doors would be replaced and hung, then read not. Answer, please. I think I just answered that, that I think we need to get more confirmation and that I know that some associations have made that decision um, to go ahead and order all doors, um, whereas I'm not sure where the others are at that, but I hope to have confirmation on that.
My pocket door was removed to replace. Assume need access to open the wall. If you close wall during remediation, are replacing the doors during remediation, or do we need to open the wall again during recovery? Um, maybe you were the one that emailed me this question that I answered a couple of days ago. But if if you were, I'll give you the same response. You know, I I don't know that, but I would assume um, if if they know that there's a pocket door there, I, I'm not so sure that they won't finish that wall and they and they maybe will leave that wall open so you could reinstall that door but i i don't know that for sure yeah the the question here about could someone clean the drive through 9111 garage there's loads of dried I, I i don't know where that is i mean if you want to send me an email on that i mean if you're asking lexington to look at that or your association please email me that address and let me know what the issue is Will all South Montco buildings be power wash mildew can be seen on the buildings? That hasn't been discussed yet, but I, I can certainly see that being part of, of the overall process as, as we get to the exteriors of these buildings. Will Somerset Villa garages need to be remediated before units will be cleared for restoration and occupancy? I, no, I don't believe so. I mean, I think what we've defined as the end of remediation for the interior units is the completion of drywall. So the, the garages can be done after that if need be. Animals have returned to Lexington. When will the, the down perimeter fencing be repaired? Uh, we're working on that right now. Um, you know, we're trying to uh, make sure that that we account for and our our LCA property adjuster can note that damage, and then we're working with our fence company. So, I mean, as soon as possible, we're 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 trying to get those fixed. Is there a separate company spraying for <clears throat> mold or bacteria? Why are we waiting on this? Spores have been distur disturbed in these units. Plastic bags leaving the unit are all sealed. But what about spores floating around? Will the duct work be inspected and clean? Again, I think I've answered this before. <clears throat> the duct work as part of this process is, is not included in that. I mean, that was not part of, of what was called out for the standard of remediation and was not something that the insurance um, provided for for the standard of remediation. So, no, that is not part of this uh, process. But if that's something you want to do as an owner, you can certainly do that on your own. Have any of the condo associations given consideration to hiring an independent insurance adjuster? What if the FEMA estimates come in low? Um, that's always an option in this process um, is, is to get a, a public adjuster involved. And so uh, we don't have to uh, uh, claim that right right now. Um, but, but certainly once we take a look at, um, at the insurance reports, uh, that, that's one of the tools in our arsenal um, is, is to get a public adjuster involved. Absolutely. Are blown out windows covered with uh, uh, master policy? I think I just answered that. I, we, what, what I'm hearing is as long as that uh, window was original to the building, we think it would be covered. But, but I'm also hearing that if it wasn't original, it will not be. But again, I have no idea how an adjuster you know, would, would make that assumption unless he can tell by the, the type of window it is. And maybe he can. I don't know. At what point can the units be occupied? Will interior doors need to be replaced before we before we move in? Um, I mean, the units, per your association, I mean, the units can be occupied once the vacate order is uh, is lifted. Um, you know, in terms of you staying there, um, I, I think I think you know you you need to certainly understand what what is legally needed to occupy. Uh, in Lee County um, per the Board of Health in terms of a toilet and a shower. But again, that's going to be an, an owner um, responsibility to take on the, um, the, the legality of that, if you will. The association isn't going to say you uh, isn't going to keep the vacate order in place just because you don't have a toilet. Um, I mean, they're going to lift the vacate order once the remediation is done and you'll have access to your unit. I have contacted FEMA four times to get disconnected or told someone will call us, but we have not received a call. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have any better resources to provide you for FEMA. I mean, FEMA 
uh, is is certainly on on the on the personal side of this issue, not the association side. If I had a resource, I would provide it to you. I do know some people have had success; others have had the same frustrating experience you've had. Um, I, I I don't know if they're still there, but there for a while, we were telling you to go across the street down Bass Road to the library where, where FEMA was set up to talk to a human. So hopefully you took advantage of that as well. How can we hire our own contractors when we have no specific information about the status of remediation or timeline? I, I mean, I, I feel your pain. I mean, it's not like we're holding back information in terms of the timeline. The reality is we don't know the timeline right now. I, I reported earlier that one of the one of the things we're waiting on, one of the moving parts is permitting for drywall. Um, so there, there's no way to tell you what that timeline is. And I can tell, in my opinion, trying to speculate on a timeline and then being wrong or having to change it is even worse. As soon as we have that information, um, we're going to let you have that. But but I, I get it. I mean, I don't have a timeline to give you right now. Um, and as soon as we do, we will. Since most units have some sort of moisture, some sort of texture on the walls, would it make more sense just hang on a second? Since most units have some sort of moist, some sort of texture on the walls, would it make more sense to simply have CJC hang the drywall and have the restoration contractor finish the drywall? Seems to redundant to have the drywall partially finished by one contractor and finished texture by another. Um, yeah, I mean, I, maybe, I mean, I don't know if it makes more sense or not, but I mean, what CJC has been contracted to do is to hang the drywall and to tape it and to mud it. Um, if, if you're, if you've got a textured wall and you're looking to match that texturing on the new drywall, then that would be done in the restoration process. Who will be paying for damage done to our units by CJC crew during remediation? If you've got damage um, and remediation, uh, I mean, if you're talking about the fact that a countertop broke um, or or a vanity or a bathtub broke, again, you, you've got insurance coverage for that. If there's something else, a personal property issue or something like that, you can certainly report that to us, and and we will we will forward that to Clyde Johnson um, company to take a look at. I'm not sure exactly what what damage you're referring to, but pipe damage, things like that, that that's all going to be taken care of um, before the drywall's up. So, I do not have the funds to put my condo back in place without insurance monies available up front. I get that. Uh, and I'm certainly uh, understanding of that. We, we put out information um, the other day about um, about the SBA, the Small Business Administration. It's one of the arms um, that, that FEMA is providing for those of you that maybe didn't get enough money from FEMA or didn't qualify for FEMA, but they uh, they have some, some very good short-term loan options that I believe provide a fantastic bridge for you to be able to put down deposits or to start the restoration process while you wait for these insurance proceeds to come in. Um, I can tell you that there is a commitment that I know from the associations that once these adjuster reports come in and once insurance proceeds start to come in, um, there, there is going to be a sense of urgency to get some of those proceeds into owners' hands as quickly as possible. Again, I have no idea what that timeline is, um, and it is going to be a little bit of an administrative nightmare to have to cut potentially 500 checks and account for everything, but we are committed to getting those funds to you as quick as we can to get you on your way on this process. But I would, I would encourage you to reach out to the SBA. That information was in that resource guide we gave you. And I know some people have already tried that. And I've gotten reports that they've had success in the application process. So I think it's a good resource to bridge the gap here. Uh, when will the exit sign and emergency line be replaced or installed? Yeah, that 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 has all been inventoried now. And those things are on order. Um, so I know Tyler and Scott <clears throat> were performing that this week, um, going through and trying to figure that out. The other thing they're working on that'll probably be in the next week is replacement of, of all the custom signage, uh, the building signs, the number signs on the buildings, uh, the directional signs around the property, that's all happening as well. Being on the fourth floor in Sutton Walk, would it would it be possible repairing the, I believe you're saying railing there? 
uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that will be repaired. Uh, that'll be on the property insurance side. And <clears throat> I don't know if Sutton Walk is, is completed with the property insurance adjuster yet. Um, I, I think that still is happening. Do you anticipate a lump sum payment from the insurance company or will we need to remit invoices to get payment? My understanding, and again, my, my information has been coming from the adjusters, which some of you know, sometimes provide good information and sometimes don't provide good information. But everybody I talk to seem to believe the way this is going to happen is these reports will be done in earnest and be fully inclusive of each unit. And then at the time of payment of proceeds, it will be issued as, as one check, typically on a per building basis, because that's how your policies are read. So um, I would anticipate getting these funds. I would anticipate the process being your association deducting from those funds um, anything that would be committed towards remediation. And I would also, just being reasonable, also think that your association may also hold back another percentage initially for any future invoices that may come in. But I can see them releasing, you know, a good amount of, of that up front with, without the need of turning in receipts. Again, I'm 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 giving you hypotheticals on the way that I see it could go down, but none of that has been confirmed. So more information to come on that. <clears throat> I haven't received any emails from my association. How do I get those past emails and get on the list? If, you, if you're not getting emails, and you should be getting emails, you should get an email from us every day at this point in time. If you're not seeing that, um, please contact the front desk. Um, you can also ask them. Uh, let them know where you live, and they can forward you maybe the last couple of association emails. But your associations are sending updates uh, periodically. And then, of course, Lexington is sending updates daily almost, uh, as well as posting those on Facebook. We're up north and not available to oversee things as they are, but are but put back in place. If something is not correct, how do we get it corrected. Yeah, I think, I mean, for, for those of you that are not here on site or up north, uh, farther away, I mean, you know, we, we've always encouraged everybody to have a home watch here. And this is a great time for a home watch service that can come by, stop by from time to time, take some photos. You can see what's happening. You can confirm if your cabinets had to be pulled out or if your tub had to be pulled out. That or, you know, find a neighbor to give you an update on that. Um, I mean, it's just, it's not logistically possible to provide a single unit update play by play every single day or even every week. We, we've noted that a, a lot of work is being done, but it's not always in the same order because there's different crews doing different things. So, um, you know, we would encourage you um, to look up a home watch service that can provide even a, a weekly check on your place. They can also double check to make sure your AC is still running, that sort of thing. So. Has the board has the board or you thought of hiring an insurance specialist or czar to deal with the complexities of insurance reimbursement? They could also answer these questions down the road. Definitely something that that we've preliminarily discussed is is getting additional both professional and administrative help as we begin to sort through um, these insurance settlement uh, reports, proceeds, as well as this invoicing. So yes, we. We have absolutely talked about that. And I can tell you, yes, we're, we're going to need that help. I mean, this is not, you know, the, the administration of this is not something that Lexington or your association is, is built for at this point in time. So yes, we've already started the process of how do we, how do we ramp up that layer of help uh, to make sure we can get through that part of the project, uh, which is just as important as the remediation work and the restoration work we're doing. We had been told whatever had been removed by CJC during during remediation was covered. Who then pays for the plumbing to hook up the toilets, shower tubs, since you're saying CJC is not doing it? Would the owner be reimbursed for this? Again, yes, we have been saying that anything that's removed is covered under insurance. So that will be part of the insurance settlement is that you would have proceeds to replace a toilet, to put a bathtub back in, to provide for new cabinets. That is all going to be on those insurance proceeds.
Uh, can't remember, were adjusters in the units before CJC started ripping out walls, fixtures, et cetera, or after? For, for the most part, for most people, it was, it was before they started the full scare remediation. However, there were some areas where they, they definitely got in there, especially if owners did work themselves, like pulling out carpets or floors, where that was already done. And, and that's really the reason why it's important that, that these insurance reports are shared with each owner so you all can vet that they've listed things correctly. And I would expect them to get some things wrong. I think it's normal and understandable that they didn't get everything 100% right. And to be able to provide a process for you um, to, to include things that maybe you felt weren't on there correctly will, will be in place. Again, another question about railings. So yes, railings will be repaired. Um, however, that's part of the property insurance side. So at Sutton Walk, I, I don't have an update on the timeline for that. Yeah, what's the status of the vacate docs for insurance companies? It stated this would be discussed at your president meeting. Yes, what we've asked, and, and I was told by CJC that I should have something, uh, hopefully by the end of the day today, what we've asked is for something a little bit more formal from OHI in regards to the uh, confirmation of the Cat 3 water and the remediation processes, uh, because that document, uh, from what I'm learning, not only will satisfy some of your insurance um, policies in terms of loss of use, but it's also something that the SBA administration is asking for in terms of documentation um, for, for remediation and restoration. So I, I do hope to have that. We did discuss that. Um, and uh, I hope to have something like that that we can put out to you all very quickly. Issues with my front door not closing properly due to wind damage. Um, I, I've, I've had those reports. I mean, the, the doors are definitely uh, something that's included um, in, uh, in the insurance claim. Uh, again, we have to wait to see what was actually noted for each unit. Um, but but yeah, so definitely there, there, there's more than a couple of doors that, that were damaged and don't shut properly. How many units have been fully remediated with drywall replaced by CJC? The answer is zero. Uh, we, we don't have the drywall permits yet, but I know that I've got, uh, my understanding is there's at least two associations that as soon as the drywall permits come in, um, they, they, they are at the stage where they could start installing drywall on some of those first units. So, Did I say that owners in Wedge would have to put back the cut drywall? No, I did not say that. No, I think maybe I was talking about the textured finish to drywall, and that would be part of restoration. But CJC is handling the hanging of drywall, the taping it, and the mudding it. When will there be a Zoom meeting where the condo association leadership be available to answer specific questions? My understanding is, um, was it November 4th? Um, my understanding is most of your associations are planning on having, going back to having their normal meeting schedules um, here this month. Um, so you should see some communications on that as we get closer to those dates. Um, and, if, and if not, if they don't do this month, Certainly, they'll make the normal meeting the next month, but but that that is starting to happen, and that has been some discussion at the president's meeting on, on how to get back on track with that. Are you serious that if CJC breaks a countertop, they aren't held liable for that or, or have to replace it, or is the association insurance covers it. Well, I'm always serious, first of all, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, the CJC, the countertops are covered. CJC is trying to not break countertops, but it's not when they, when they do break one, it's not because they meant to. Uh, it's because it just happens when you pull these granite countertops off with these seams, sometimes they don't hold together. Um, so no, they're not liable for that, but, but we've got some pretty good um, communication that says those countertops, even though they're they're being asked to be saved, if they're broken, there's coverage for that in the insurance claim. Gotcha. Here, here I didn't know this, but somebody said they applied for an SBA 
loan, but was declined because it's a secondary home. So I wasn't aware of that. Didn't know that was one of the, the qualifications of that. Um, but uh, um, I appreciate you passing that information along. How can I find out if my specific unit has been sprayed for mold or bacteria? I, I, I don't know that you, you would know that right now, but I, I think we, we noted in the steps, there's actually two different applications that they use as far as a disinfectant. Um, one is during the process um, and before the drywall is hung, and then there's another disinfectant that goes down um, after the drywall as far as like, like one of the, the last steps uh, in the cleanup process. I've hired my own remediation company. Once remediation is complete and approved by CJC, can I hire my own drywall to be complete? Again, I think I think that is something the associations are handling on a uh, on on an association by association basis. So I would direct that question to your association just to confirm that. What's the process for submitting receipts for replacement of damaged AC units? Don't have a process in place yet, um, so hang on to those receipts. If you were listening when we talked about potentially how this insurance settlement will go down uh, and, and the fact that your association is going to essentially cut you a check, um, you may not need to turn in those receipts because you're, you're going to get reimbursed for that, uh, for, for what's on your policy for your AC, as well as anything else that was listed there. So um, I'm confused about the sheetrock permitting. Have some units received permitting? Are we to understand that CGAC general contracting cannot pull a permit for the scope of this project, but individual owners are? Um, yeah, so so no, there's not. We have not received any permitting. Permitting is done on an association by association basis and on a building by building basis. So each building and each association needs to pull a different permit for drywall. Nothing has come through, although... Um, permit applications are processing, but we have not received a permit back. I don't know of any individual owner that has pulled a permit for drywall. I, I, I'm not. I'm not aware of anybody that's at that stage or has confirmed to me because of that. So I can tell you, with Clyde Johnson and their reach and the amount of work that they do in Lee County, I'm going to say they've got a better chance than anybody of holding Lee County's feet to the fire. But that's not saying much because Lee County has historically been very slow in issuing permits, even in normal times. Um, but they've got somebody at that office every day checking with their contact, trying to push this process along. So I, I don't know if you've got information where someone's pulled a permit on an individual basis, but I've not heard that. And I don't know if anybody in any associations that are hanging drywall right now. Can we get the mapping report for our uh, SV unit specifically so we know whether the cabinets must be removed or not? We were told we were getting these reports. So the reports were put out on the website, um, but we also you know, confirmed with everybody that, that it's really a twofold process to confirm those reports. I mean, the reports is one tool, but each unit is getting a visual check. And actually in Somerset, it, it's getting an even more thorough check because it's the one association where we saw a very wide range of water intrusion from no water to, you know, up to a foot of water. And so those units are being scrutinized before any crews go in there by supervisors to make sure that things need to be remediated or confirming that things can be saved. Somebody said you haven't heard from your home watch since September. I would think maybe you should probably try to employ a new home watch person then. We have building captains in Waterford. Do other associations with buildings? These can be contact resources for those who are not local. Yeah, some associations have set that up, absolutely, where they've got captains and they're going around and they're really helping out in the process. Um, other associations, it's not as easy as that. I mean, you've got 72 buildings in Somerset Villas. Um, so I, I don't know how that process would play out. Um, but certainly in places like Waterford, South Mont Cove, it, it, makes, it, it does make sense to have more people helping and, and both those associations do. What's the status of internet and vacated units? If outlets have been replaced, does that mean power is operating? 
potentially if the outlet has been replaced, it could mean your power is up and running, but I don't have, I don't have information on specifically what units have power and, and what units don't and what needs, what outlets need to be replaced. I have approved for an SBA loan, but I need a signed statement from a board member stating the association responsibility for repair versus the individual responsibility. Yes, uh, we, we know if you're the one that emailed us today on that, um, we are working on that. Um, so yes, we know that that's part of that process. Uh, and we're hoping to get, uh, we're actually hoping, we're, we're asking our legal counsel to draft a form letter that we could use for all five associations and maybe even put that online to where you can just download that. So uh, I just reached out today because I got that email last night and we're, we are working on that because we, we do understand now that's part of that process that SBA wants from you. Saw three lanai's in Southmont being cleaned this week, moved everything out and back in. Where are these condos in the remediation stage? It's really hard to say. I mean, if, if you've read the updates we put out this week, even though there's, you know, seven, eight, nine steps to this, not every step is happening in the same order. It really depends on what crews are in that area doing what. Um, so I, I can't specifically say that once you see a lanai being cleaned out, it means that everything else has been done because uh, that's not always the case. It's the same reason why some of you guys are emailing us saying, hey, they didn't remove my flooring in this one room. That's because there's different crews removing different types of flooring. It doesn't mean you've been skipped. So it's really hard to say um, if you see them doing X, it means they're at this point. I, I, I don't think you can really make that determination. Is there a CJC contact if we have a question? I am in a middle unit, cabinets not removed, but both sides of my cabinets were removed. Well, your your contact for questions like that is your association. We have said on numerous times, Clyde Johnson has been contracted by your association. There's no reason for a unit owner to cl contact Clyde Johnson or any of his employees. Please submit your questions to your association, and then they will, with, with help of Lexington, get answers to those for you. So please email that to your association. If we need to make, take delivery of replacement vanities, can they be stored in our units prior to occupancy? I, I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't be. Um, you've got personal property or some people have personal property in there already. So I'm sure that that, that can be accommodated. What about damaged lanai's? Who takes care of those? And again, we've said before that from what our understanding is, things on your lanai, such as acrylic sliders or hurricane shutters, are going to be probably homeowner expense uh, or, or responsibility. Anything that was original to the building, we believe that's going to be covered in the policy, albeit flood or property, depending on what level you were on. If you want to proceed with taking care of anything in your lanai, go forward with that. That is fine. Uh, and just save your receipts in the event that it's included on the claim then you'll get reimbursed for that. I observed one of the plastic wrapping crews riding on my kitchen counter with a Sharpie. Will CJC pay for correction or replacement even if the countertop is not damaged by breaking? Why, things like this, folks, just email me separately. I mean, I, I have... Yeah, I'd certainly want to investigate this a little bit more as to what the damage is, but but just send me an email. Be happy to answer you privately. Just to be clear, owners have to have someone put back the tubs, toilets, et cetera. Yes, that's restoration. So, I mean, that is going to be in the restoration phase. So that's going to be a different contractor that's doing that, albeit somebody that you hire out personally or individually, or if you go with one of the packages or one of the vendors that we're trying to secure to offer packages. I looked under the real estate on the website for South Mont Cove and I can't find that report on water mapping. It's there. Um, click on real estate, South Mont Cove, and then um, there's a bunch of items listed there and one's going to say MDA report, water mapping, something like that. The outlets have been removed, but what about the cable jacks? They're at the same level. Aren't they a problem if they get wet? Um, I, I don't have an answer to that, but but I'm, I'm sure if they felt like those cable jacks needed to be replaced, 
they will, or maybe they're gonna come around and replace those at a different time um, in the process before drywall. Street sweeper, absolutely. Yes, that, that, that is definitely uh, on our hit list to sweep the streets. We're really waiting to make sure that we got FEMA coming through here because if you've seen some of the mess they leave behind um, in the streets and they're doing a great job, but, but they're leaving obviously some remnants, there's no sense getting the street uh, sweepers out here and then having to redo it, but that is definitely part of our plan. At what point will we know of any more demo will happen in our unit? I'm trying to line up a contractor, but not sure of complete scope. Example, one bathroom gutted, but the other is untouched. Um, I mean, something like that. I mean, if you want to send an email to your association, we may be able to find that out for you. I would say, you know, unless there's different flooring and different fixtures in the other bathroom, it very well could be that they determined the second bathroom didn't need remediated. But again, I'm not confirming that. I'm just letting you know what, what I've seen out there. Um, and, and we have seen situations where one bathroom was fine and one bathroom needed to be pulled out. Gotcha. Somebody just said to get the water mapping report, you must first log into the website. Sorry, I, I figured you assumed that. Yeah, lexingtoncountryclub.com, sign into the website click on real estate um, and then click on your uh, community should be there. Is the SBA loan a FEMA loan? Does it require you to take FEMA flood insurance? I don't know that. I'm not sure. Um, I don't have those details. Okay. I'm out of questions and it's an hour. So we're, we'll end it. Hopefully Monday, we'll probably have another one of these. Um, appreciate everybody coming by. We'll have this up on YouTube uh, come tomorrow morning if anybody didn't get a chance to, to see it all. Y'all have a good day.